guys, it's officially February, so I decided I would show you the books that I read in January. Um, I love watching Priscilla's videos when she concludes the month and lets everyone know what she read and how she liked the books. So I decided that I would let you guys know what I read, what I liked, and didn't like this month. I only read five books. Stay tuned for what I read in the month of January and what I liked and what I didn't like in those five books. The first book I read this month was Are You For Real by Sarah Cadefors. Kate Force, and um, this was a really cute book, and that's what I was looking for. I was looking for a light, quick, cute read that would be enjoyable but still meaningful because of the characters and their kind of backgrounds. This is this book is about two characters who meet online, and the girl in this story is named her name is Kyla. She is a party girl. She's from the city. Her father is a very rich man, but even though her parents are divorced. Her father still pays for her and her mother to live in a good house. She's kind of the girl to go around from guy to guy and she's surrounded by friends who aren't the best example. She starts to realize that things are different and she doesn't relate to her friends anymore. Soon things with her mother start to crumble and she looks for someone to talk to online. And at the same time, Alex is a boy who goes online as well. Alex is a shy ballet dancer from the suburbs, so there's quite a difference between the two. Um, Kyle is very outspoken and he is very shy. He hasn't been kissed before and she's kind of the one who's done all that and all that party girl stuff. So at the same time, they're looking for someone to talk to. Alex feels kind of trapped. He is... He's pretty lonely. I mean, his mother is very strict when it comes to his ballet, and he goes online to kind of talk to someone who understands him. He meets Kyla, and the first time they talk is only brief, but soon when they keep exchanging emails, it turns into something more. It was a really cute novel. I did like it. Um, I gave it 3.5 out of 5. That being because I wasn't as impressed as I thought I would be. Kyla was kind of an interesting character. She had mixed personalities. At times I did like her and at times I didn't. By the end of the book I did like her a lot. Alex is a great character. I really liked him. He was really relatable and I just loved his personality. These two characters feel very misunderstood and alone and I really enjoyed reading about them and their journey, journey I guess, to discover what they should be doing, what their real passions are, and together they really teach um, each other about themselves. I thought I did like it. It was different and unique, which I did like. But overall, some of the, some parts were boring. Overall, I was just not as pressed as I, impressed as I would have liked to have been. But I do recommend it. Um, the simplicity of the idea and the sim the, just the simpleness of how they've met and you know how they become closer is really great. So three to. 3.5 out of 5 stars for Are You For Real by Sarah Cade Fors. If you're looking for a cute, simple read, I definitely recommend it. The second book of January that I read was Solitary by Alexander Gordon Smith. I gave this a full out 5 out of 5 stars. I cannot talk enough about this series because it is just amazing and absolutely captivating. It was great to read the sequel because the first one ended with such a huge cliffhanger, so I was dying to get my hands on a copy of this. This book starts with an incredible amount of action, and I am so excited to um, know what has happened since the first book. I'm not going to go into depth about what this is about because it will spoil what happened in the first book, but I am going to do a review on lockdown and this book in this new idea I have, so stay tuned for that. I really want to get into more reviews. Lockdown is the first book in this series and it is about boys sent to prison a mile beneath the earth's surface and this prison is called The Furnace. It's pretty much for young teenagers who have committed, committed crimes and it's not a regular prison. It is, it is run by pretty much men in suits with silver eyes and they are called the black suits and it's also run by these gross gray skinned um, men slash monsters who are called Weezers and they have like mass, um, sorry, gas masks on their face. These creeps are running this prison and it is very scary and the main character is Alex and he has been set up to look like he killed his best friend by the black suits and pretty much he was sent to this prison and it's his journey starts there. He is thrown into this crazy adventure and nightmare where these um, boys are forced to stay in these cells, some for because they were proven guilty, but some were proven guilty even though they weren't, or they were innocent. So some were there because they were set up to look like they committed a crime they didn't even commit. 
He believes that there is a way to escape and that's where this starts. He is determined to find a way. He is determined to um, discover an escape route out of this hellhole. If you're interested, I highly recommend it. It's definitely a little bit more darker and um, gorier than most YA reads out there. But it's a good it's a good horror. If you don't like horror books, I definitely think the series will change your mind on the whole genre. I totally believe that. So yeah, that was the second book I read of January. I give it a 5 out of 5. Definitely read it. Go check out Lockdown as well. So the next book I read in January, this is my third book that I read, was Matched by Ali Kondai. And as much as I want to love this book, I can't. I give it a, I gave it a 3 out of 5. I was actually kind of being generous with a 3. I could give it 2 out of 5 for some reasons, but overall I'm going to give it a 3 because of the author's um, creation of the world and how she puts everything together to make it really come to life. The main character is Cassia, and this world that she lives in is the future. And it puts it's definitely a dystopian book, so if you love dystopian, then maybe you'll love this. She lives in this world where the society makes diff your, de your decisions for you. They decide who you will love, who, who you will spend the rest of your, of your life with, um, what job you'll work at. It's just a lot of um, choices that they make for you where you have no control over it. It's a really restricted uh, world, I find. There's not a lot of variety. They have a hundred songs, a hundred um, poems, and a hundred pieces of art. It's not a world where you can um, write a book, publish it. It's really restricted. They ban that. It's really strange to read about this, where they have certain selections you can only choose from. And there's a lot of rules when it comes to this world. Like, their transportation is an air train. When they have to eat, it comes to their house steaming under foilware. So they don't, they don't cook, it comes to them. When you turn 17, that year you turn 17, any time during the year, you will have a match banquet. This match banquet um, pretty much puts you with the person you're going to spend the rest of your life with. This person can be in a different province, this person could be in your city, but that's very unlikely. Cassia has her banquet in the beginning of the book, that's what we learned. This is the moment where you're going to learn who you have to live with for the rest of your life. And when it's Cassie's turn to go up, um, go up and find out, she looks at the screen that is supposed to display her match and it is black. Nothing is being displayed on the screen. And that can only mean one thing. That the boy she's matched with is sitting in the very room that she stands in. So she looks around and then the screen displays Xander, her, best, her best friend. It's very unlikely for you to be matched with someone in your own city. And it is crazy because they they're already best friends. They already know each other. You are given a micro card to insert into your port to look at what the person's likes are, dislikes, um, who they are, and just kind of some details about them. This micro card is especially um, important for people who don't know who their match are. It lets them know what they like, what they dislike, and that and that sort of thing. But Cassia already knows Alexander. Uh, they've been best friends since they were little. But she looks at the micro card anyway. She puts it in the port, and before Xander's face flashes away, she sees another face before the screen turns black. And she even recognizes the second face that she saw, and the second boy that she saw on the screen was a boy named Kai Markham. Pretty much this is where it starts off. Cassia learns about Kai and his story, and she cannot help but start to... Um, like him and want to know more about him. It's not possible for someone to have feelings for someone else in this society because you are matched with the person from the very moment of your match banquet. Kai is not like anyone else. He has a certain past. He is different than anyone else. A love triangle forms and this is where it kicks off. I got frustrated with Cassia so much. I just love Xander and I just felt it wasn't fair how um, this love triangle formed and Xander couldn't really do anything about it. I was just kind of frustrated with Cassia and Kai is just not the most likable character. I found him really bland and kind of, f not frustrating, but I wanted to learn more about him. I wanted him to like, I don't know, I just wanted him to just speak more. I found him really timid and quiet and he was just overall very strange. I just was not impressed with this book at all. I found it really boring at times and I wasn't as captivated as I wanted to be. Cassia was a good character. I mean, she was okay. I liked her determination, but she was a little 
so-so with me. Xander is full of life. He is so exuberant and so outgoing. He makes you laugh and every time he comes into the story, you just can't help but smiling, but, but smile. But Kai is just, I don't know, I couldn't really relate to him. That's why I found it hard to read about him and Cassia together. Another book I read in January was It's Not Summer Without You by Jenny Jenny Han. And this was a great sequel. I absolutely loved it. I just can't help but become more and more attached to these characters that Han writes. If you're looking for a light but very captivating read, then definitely check this out because it is full of emotion and feelings and romance and love. I was completely impressed with the sequel. I did give it 4.5 out of 5 because the ending was just weird for me and I wasn't too thrilled with it. The main character of this series is Belly and she's a great girl. I absolutely love her. Her, her mother, and her brother go to Cousins Beach every single summer to spend it with her mother's best friend and their, um, her sons. Belly, her mother, her brother, her mother's best friend Susanna, and Susanna's two sons, who, are, who is Conrad and Jeremiah. Now, in the first book, um, Belly believes that this summer is going to be different. She wants to finally pursue something with Conrad. She's loved Conrad ever since she was a little girl, and she finally feels that this summer is going to be different. I can't really go into too much depth without giving it away, but pretty much, um, Jenny Han, she goes into the past as well, but she writes it as if it's the present. So she goes into memories, and experiences and kind of moments in the past. Those flashbacks and memories really make an emotional and beautiful book because they're not just simple memories but they kind of build the character's past and we really learn a lot about the characters from those little flashbacks. The sequel was great, definitely check out the first book. And the first book is called The Summer I Turned Pretty. It's much more than what I explained because of how she writes the memories, how she crafts little jokes and inside jokes. Even like simple conversations make this book so enjoyable and so much fun. So definitely check it out. It's emotional but still funny, sad but still happy, and light but still very emotional. So definitely check it out. This definitely was my favorite book of the month. This is the fifth book I read of January and it was absolutely amazing. I actually don't want to talk about what it's about because I want to do a separate review on this really really badly but just know that it was so impacting and so emotional that I cried. I'm really thankful for books like that because when you think about it it's just words on a page and when it when it impacts you that deeply then you know it is it has done its job and it has um, exceeded words. It really exceeded fiction for me and it was really impacting. I recommend it for ages 15 and up I'd say. There was some not mature content but there's moments where it's serious but there's moments where it's absolutely um, really funny and really um, really cute and there's moments where it's really sad and really heart aching and heartbreaking. <laughs> heart aching and heartbreaking. I can't even talk. This book is just as breathtaking as the cover is. I absolutely love the cover. This book was so many things, so many words that I cannot, that cannot like come out of me right now. I give it 5 out of 5 and I recommend it to everyone who loves a good romance book with intense emotions and crazy, crazy, like, just so much, wow, I don't even know. I get like, I get like choked up thinking about it, even though I read it like two weeks ago. It's because there's just so many things that happen that just make my heart break all over again. But then I think about everything good that happened and it puts the pieces back after it breaks my heart. Wow. It's the whole involvement of the character's love along with the music. You just have to experience, you just have to read it to experience what I'm talking about. But you will definitely understand it once you read it. Sing Me to Sleep was the last book that I read in January and it was fantastic fan fan fantastic incredible breathtaking amazing awesome incredible I think I said incredible already yeah so that was my video I hope you guys enjoyed if you go to my um, channel on the side I do list the books that I've read what I rate them and what I'm currently reading so that's definitely a way to keep up with that if you're interested I do up update that fre frequently thank you for watching thank you to all my new subscribers thank you to just everybody for watching my videos. I really appreciate it and um, see you next time.